Hi, I'm Connor from Connor.engineer and today I'm going to be going through how I designed and 3D printed this hinge mechanism in SolidWorks. Uh, so you can see it's very similar to uh, a door hinge, a common door hinge that you would see, uh, except it's a lot smaller and the hinge mechanism moves quite freely. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go through how to draw this uh, in SolidWorks and how I worked out the different tolerances and stuff. You can see there's no play in it or anything. Tolerances are worked out correctly. I do a few different prints uh, to work out the tolerances for this. Uh, if you saw my previous uh, thread uh, drawing video, um, you'll see how I draw. I figured out the tolerances for that. The tolerances for this are different uh, because this is a print in place model. Uh, so this prints as one piece, uh, and you can't take it apart. Um, but it's still able to move because uh, there's gaps within the part, uh, but it can't be taken apart. Uh, so we'll go over to SolidWorks now. Okay, so I have SolidWorks open here, and for this short tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the footage uh, by about 10 times its original speed. Uh, so you can see here I'm modeling the main hinge piece. Uh, now I'm just putting some holes in it just for cosmetic purposes. And now I'm just doing some chamfering and filleting. Okay, so now I'm starting to draw the um, the gaps that will go in between the fingers for the hinge. And I'm just doing a linear pattern to move that on fully. And some filleting there, just to smooth out the surface. Now I'm drawing the lugs uh, that are going to hold the hinge together. And now I'm doing some mirroring, just so I only have to draw this uh, lug once. Uh, for all the information about the tolerances and how I worked all this out, you can watch the full tutorial. And I'm just doing some filleting there. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating a, an offsetted uh, version of this file uh, to cut out of the other file um, to make the holes. Uh, now we've moved on to the second part of the hinge, uh, where I'm cutting the opposite fingers and doing a linear pattern to get those, and followed by some more filleting. Okay, so now I'm inserting that larger offset piece that we made, and I'm mating that up, and I'm going to use combine to subtract that from the piece so we get the holes. Now I'm doing an assembly of the two parts. Um, as this is a print and paste model, it has to be assembled before uh, we print it. So I'm just getting ready to slice the uh, final model here. Uh, so I've brought my model into uh, Cura inside Octoprint, which is the software I use to manage my 3D printer. Um, so when you import the model, it'll probably be orientated incorrectly, so you just need to uh, change the orientation of it. Um, it doesn't really matter which way you print this, but I think that uh, it might make a difference. Uh, so I'm just going to orientate it this way. Um, this is the way I printed all my test prints, and they came out fine, uh, so I, I don't want to change that. Uh, I'm just going to position this on a place that's easy to get me get it off the bed uh, because the reason I put it over here is because this is kind of a this piece is kind of a large footprint uh, relative to its height it's kind of hard it would be kind of hard to get off so I put it near the edge of the bed uh, just so I can I can have kind of space uh, it's very close to the edge so it's easy enough to get a knife under it um, so I'm using an Anet A8 uh, just some basic settings. I'm using a 200 degree nozzle temperature, 50 degree bed temperature. They're 0 0.2 layer heights. Uh, it's 20% fill density. That doesn't really make a difference because it's uh, there's so little fill in this anyway because of the 1.2 she 2 mil shell thickness that it doesn't really matter how much fill density you use. And I'm using a print speed of 30 millimeters per second. So this is ready to be sliced and then printed. Um, Okay, so what I've got here is a time lapse of the uh, print printing. It takes about an hour and a half to fully print. So it's, it's a quick enough print. Um, and this is just the time lapse.
Okay, so at the end of all that, we have our finished piece. And you can see the movement in it and the tolerances are good. Um, on my ANET 8, um, for a print and place part, a 0 0.4 mil air gap between everything seems to be a good tolerance uh, for working with print and place parts. Uh, you can see it moves quite well. Initially, when you take it off the printer, you might have to uh, work it over and back a bit. Um, but then after that, it's fine. It, it there's no. It moves very freely, and it, it seems to be fairly good. Um, that's that's it really. Um, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you got some value from it. Um, if you're looking for the files, they'll be available on Thingiverse uh, from the link in the description. Um, yeah. So thanks for making it through this tutorial, and hope to see you again. Bye.